Why does she feel Cheever? I'll tell them she said it were all scored. John, there's so many in the jail. More than Cheever's help is needed now, I think. Would you favor me with this? Go to Abigail. What am I to say to Abigail? John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There's a promise made in any event. What promise? Spoke or silent. A promise is surely made. And she may dote on it now. I'm sure she does. Who thinks to kill me and then to take my place? It is her dearest hope, John. I know it. Be a thousand names. Why does she call mine? There'd be a certain danger in calling such a name. I am no goody good that sleeps in ditches, nor Osborne drunk and half witted She dare not call out such a farmer's wife, but there'd be monstrous profit in her. She thinks to take my place, John. She cannot think it. John, have you ever shown her somewhat of contempt? She cannot pass you a judge, but you will blush. I may blush for my sin. I think she sees another meaning in that blush. And what see you? What see you, Elizabeth? I think you'd be somewhat ashamed, for I am there and she so close. When will you know me, woman? Where I stone out of a crack for shame this seven months. Go and tell her she's a whore. Whatever promise she may say, break it, John, break it. Good then, I will go. Oh, how unwilling. I will curse her bottle and the old cinder in hell that pray to grudge me not my anger. Your anger? Woman, am I so base? Do you truly think me base? Then how do you charge me with such a promise? The promise of Stalin gave a mare I gave that girl. Why do you anger with me when I bid you break it? Because it speaks deceit. And I am honest. But I will plead no more. I see now your spirit twists around the single era of my life, and I will never tear it free. You'll tear it free when you come to know that I will be your only wife, or no wife at all. She has an arrow in you yet, John Proctor, and you know it well. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Come in. Come in. I hope you do not stop. No. No. It's only that I heard no more. It's a good one, Doctor. I, Elizabeth, I hope you're not out of bed yet. No, no. We are not used to visitors after dark, but you are welcome here, sir. Will you sit you down? I will. I'll let you sit down. Will you drink cider, Mr. Hale? I know it will develop my stomach. I have some further traveling yet tonight. Sit you down, sir. I will not keep you long, but I have some business with you. Business of the court? No. No, I come with my own, without the court's authority. Now hear me. I know not that you are aware, but your wife's name is mentioned in the court. We know it, sir. Our Mary Warren told us. We are entirely amazed. I'm a stranger to you, as you know, and uh, in my ignorance, I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of them that come accused before the court. So this afternoon, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house. Rebecca's charged? God forbid such one be charged. She is, however, mentioned somewhere. You will never believe, I hope, that Rebecca trafficked with the devil. Woman. It is possible. Surely you cannot think so. It's a new time, sir. No man will longer doubt that the powers of God are gathered in the monstrous attack upon the stage. I see. There's too much truth now tonight. You will agree, sir. I have no knowledge in that line. But it's hard to think so pious a woman be secretly a devil's bitch after 70 years of such good prayer. Why? But the devil is a wily one. You cannot deny it. However, she is far from accused, and I know she will not. I thought, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you permit me. Well, we have no fear of questions, sir. Good then. In the book of record that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you are rarely in church on the Sabbath day. No, sir, you're mistaken. Twenty-six times in seventeen months. I must call that rare. 
you tell me why you are so absent? <coughs> I never knew I had to account to that man before I come to church or stay at home. My wife was sick this winter. So I am told. But you, sir, why could you not come alone? I surely did come when I could, and when I could not, I prayed in this house. Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. It does, sir. It does. And it also tells me that a minister may pray to God without having golden candlesticks upon the altar. What golden candlesticks? Since we built that church, there were pure candlesticks upon the altar. Francis Nurse made them, you know. The sweeter hand never touched the metal. The Paris came. And for twenty weeks, he preached nothing but golden candlesticks until he had them. I lay with the earth from dawn of day to blink of night, and I tell you true. When I looked to heaven, and see my money glared at his elbows, it hurt my prayer, sir. It hurt my prayer. I think sometimes a man dreams cathedrals, not clapboard meeting houses. And yet, Mr. A Christian on a Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children. Five boys. How comes it only two are baptized? I like it not that Mr. Paris laid his hand upon my baby. I see no light of God in the man, I will not conceal it. Mr. Proctor, that is not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore the light of God is in him. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? No. No, I, I nailed the roof upon that church. I hung the door. Oh, did you? That's a good sign. It may be that I've been too quick to bring the man to book. But you cannot think, Reverend, of desire the destruction of religion. I think that's in your mind, is it not? I have... There is a softness in your record, sir. A softness. I think maybe we have been too hard with Mr. Paris. I think so. But sure, we never loved the devil here. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I surely do. There be no mark of blame upon my life, Mr. Hale. I am a covenanted Christian woman. And you, Mr. I am sure that I do. Let you repeat them, if you will. The commandments. Ah. Thou shalt not kill, I. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You said that twice, sir. Aye. Adultery, John. You see, sir, between the two of us, we do know them all. I think it'd be a small fault. Theology, sir, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. There be no love for Satan in this house, mister. I pray it. I pray it dearly. Well, I I'll bet you good night. Mr. Hale! I do think you're suspecting me somewhat, are you not? Goody Proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you must tell him. John! What's that? Will you tell him? I have no witness. I cannot prove it except that my word be taken, but... I know the children's sickness had naught to do with witchcraft. Not to do with... Mr. Powers discovered them sport in the woods. They were startled and took sick. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? Aye. Abigail Williams told you it was not to do with witchcraft. She told me the day you came, sir. <clears throat> Why? Why did you keep this? I never knew until tonight the world is gone. Damn with this nonsense. Nonsense? I have myself examined Tichuba, Sarah Good, and numerous others that have confessed to dealing with the devil. They have confessed it. And why not? If they will hang for the night. There's them that will swear to anything before they hang. Have you never thought of that? I have. I have indeed. 
And you? Did you testify to this in court? I had not reckoned in going into court with it, but if I must, I will. Do you falter here? I falter nothing. But I may wonder if my story will be credited in such a court. I do wonder on it, when such a steady by the minister as you will suspicion a woman that has never lied and cannot, and the world knows she cannot. I may falter somewhat, I am no fool. Proctor, let you open with me now, for I have a rumor that troubles me. Since you hold no belief that there may even be witches in the world, is that true, sir? I know not what I have said. I may have said it. I have wondered if there are witches in the world. But I cannot believe they come among us now. Then you do not... I have no knowledge of it. The Bible speaks of witches. I will not deny them.